James O'Keefe and Project Veritas have just released hot mic footage of an ABC News anchor talking about how the Epstein story, they had it. They had everything. They had Clinton. For some reason, the story was shut down by the network and she doesn't know why it was taken off the air. Now, many of you may have seen this footage already, but there's a lot of other news. See, back in August, I believe it was, NPR covered why so many outlets failed to report this news about Epstein. For the sake of doing this video on YouTube and making sure it gets the biggest possible reach, I have to be very, very, very careful about how I word everything we're walking into. I think Project Veritas is extremely brave for, for producing this news. Luke Rutkowski of We Are Change going to the island. All of this stuff is extremely dangerous. And I'll show you. There is a great concern that by showing you all of this in context, this video might get deranked, demonetized, shut down. Keep that in mind. What, what we're learning now from this expose is extremely important. ABC News is essentially denying it. But this is wrong, okay? They're lying. They are lying across the board. I will tell you this. We have definitive reporting from NPR that at least in one instance, one of these journalists appeared to be in on the take. That's they're saying there's tax filings showing a money transfer. Okay, so maybe I got to be very careful here, you guys. These journalists have partied with Epstein, have received money from him. So to this ABC News reporter wondering why her story was shut down, we might actually know. Now, the important thing here is what NPR reported back in August about how all of these networks, they got Vanity Fair, ABC and The New York Times shutting down the reporting within like years ago. It seems like there's corruption, powerful people who don't want to be put at risk, who are protecting other really, really awful people. Now, I can't tell you the specifics about what Epstein was accused of, because if I say it, YouTube will shut this down. I do, I do not want to give them any reason for deranking this content. So I will tell you this. We're going to read the gist of what Project Veritas has uncovered, the, the, the outright denial, the lie. I will call it a lie outright. In my opinion, I got to say it. I got to be careful. ABC News is lying about this story. They're claiming it didn't meet their standards or whatever. BS. Okay. ABC News has covered a ton of stuff without evidence. This had evidence, but I got to be careful. So I'll tell you this. If you like the work that I'm doing, please consider sharing this video. It is very likely YouTube will strike this video down hard. They've done it in the past. I have to be very, very careful. But if you share this and you share the original leaked audio from Veritas, which I'm sure many of you already have, you can help get this story out. What I want to add to the Veritas leaked video is the NPR reporting, the statement from ABC, bring it all together in one piece and show you the connection these journalists have and why the story won't get out. See, somebody was, was complaining. Why did it have to be James O'Keefe and Veritas to release the audio? It's really simple. And James mentions it because nobody else would do it. And let me show you the connections these journalists had to Epstein. Here's the video. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to make sure I am walking on eggshells here. You know, I did a couple of videos about Hillary Clinton and they got deranked and demonetized. I have no idea why. Because YouTube, whatever the reason, leaked insider recording from ABC News reveals network executives killed bombshell story implicating Jeffrey Epstein. Quote, I've had this story for three years. ABC would not put it on the air, says Good Morning America breaking news anchor and 2020 co-anchor Amy Robach. It was unbelievable. We had Clinton. We had everything. She said we had her whole allegations about Prince Andrew. I got a little concerned about why I couldn't get on. Amy Robach describes how she interviewed a woman who had the courage to come forward years ago about Epstein. She had pictures. She had everything. She had pictures. That's a quote. She was in hiding for 12 years. We convinced her to come out. We convinced her to talk to us. Robach details ABC's initial response to her. Who's Jeffrey Epstein? No one knows who that is. This is a stupid story. Lies. Now it's all coming out. I freaking had all of it. And she said more. She says basically, that they were scared they wouldn't be able to interview Will and Kate once the palace found out. That's right. Prince Andrew was implicated in photographs. And those photos have come out. That's hard evidence. Well, I show you now, ABC News, their response, in my opinion, is an outright lie. They're lying. They are covering this up. And I, and, and, and I think my reasoning is sound. ABC News statement at the time, not all of our reporting met our standards to air, 
but we have never stopped investigating the story. Ever since, we've had a team on this investigation and sub- substantial resources dedicated to it. That work has led to a two-hour documentary and six-part podcast that will air in the new year. After the story was broken, after the arrests were made, that's when they said, okay, now we're safe. No, now we have no choice. They also said, Amy Roback statement, as a journalist, as the Epstein story continued to unfold last summer, I was caught in a private moment of frustration. I was upset that an important interview I had conducted with Virginia Roberts didn't air because we could not obtain sufficient corroborating evidence to meet ABC's editorial standards about her allegations. My comments about Prince Andrew and her allegation that she had been seen with Bill Clinton on Epstein's private island were in reference to what Virginia Roberts said in the interview in 2015. I was referencing her allegations, not what ABC News had verified through our reporting. The interview itself, while I was disappointed it didn't air, didn't meet our standards. In the years since, no one ever told me or the team to stop reporting on Jeffrey Epstein, and we have continued to aggressively pursue this important story. The Daily Caller made a very funny statement in response to this. They said, it's ABC News trying to put toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah, you can't really do it, but you can try. No, Amy's private statements speak for themselves. Now, I will mention, in this moment, you have to trust, you have to figure out what you think is more likely to be true. In one instance, you have Amy Roback in a passionate moment saying, we had this, we had everything, we had photos, we had Clinton. And she's saying that to the people around her. Now she's issuing issuing a public statement. I wonder why. In my personal opinion, her candid private moment is more likely to be true, that they had evidence. You know why? Because we've seen the photos of this woman with Prince Andrew. That's corroborating evidence. And we also know that these outlets, they reported on Covington off of what? An out of context clip? ABC News recently ran footage of a, a show in Kentucky claiming it was, a, it, was, it was war footage. We know all about that. They had to retract that. We know all about Kavanaugh and how the media and these companies published all of these allegations without any corroborating evidence. But for this story, oh no, we couldn't prove it. You had a photograph. You had an interview. You had, you had witnesses. You had the lawyers. You had it on record. And you said, I don't know why the story was, shut, was, was not aired. And now, caught with the pub, footage going public, you have no choice. It just didn't meet our standards, please. What standards? How many mistakes have you made? Well, there's still a lot to go through. And I'm going to show you now NPR's reporting. See, NPR talked about why ABC did not, it, it, they talked about how ABC didn't air the story they had. And they talked about how no one knew why. ABC refused to talk about their editorial procedures. The New York Times. New York Times had a conflict of interest. Apparently, their reporter, I, I want to make sure I'm careful on this one, may have taken money after being invited to the island. We have a story from page six going back to 2010. A bunch of high profile journalists partying with Epstein. Is it possible? Some of these companies are in on the take, or is it more simply like Chris Hayes said about Weinstein and Ronan Farrow, the path of least resistance? And uh, uh, Epstein had what? Nearly $600 million? Maybe these news companies are just pathetic, shaking in their boots, soaked in urine, unable to actually do real news. Or perhaps it's because some of their highest profile personalities and these journalists were connected in some capacity and it was too dangerous for them to do the story. Well, somebody asks, why couldn't literally anyone else have found the ABC hot mic moment on Epstein? And O'Keefe said, we've been told by all our insiders they don't trust other news outlets. This is self-evident by A. Roback's own comments about our network not reporting news. So the insiders come to Veritas. Think about this for a second. On a hot mic, in a private moment, this ABC News anchor says we had everything. We had Clinton. Do you know Clinton? There's logs showing him flying to the island, what, 27 times? And she says, we had it, and we don't know why it didn't air. That hot mic moment is the proof as to why people aren't, aren't going to these networks with this news. And it also shows us why Veritas is so important. Now, look, I think Veritas is biased, but I don't think they're wrong. I don't think they're trying to mislead you. I think they just have their own framing. And I'll give you an example of this, because I think it's fair to point out. When they exposed Pinterest... They showed this list of websites, and the website they chose was uh, Live Action, a pro-life organization. 
They didn't highlight in their expose anti-media, which was a anti-war left-wing publication also being censored. And I think that's because they have a bias. But I also think they were telling the truth in what they were saying. It's okay if you have a bias. You're presenting factual information. I was able to take that and say, here, check this out. In this instance, what we see from Veritas is a willingness. Man, let me just say, James O'Keefe is <laughs> it's a brave individual. I'll say that. And you also had Luke Rakowski who went to the island. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, man. There are people who, who are, are taking great risks to themselves and their careers by doing this news. And as we saw, what we're learning from James O'Keefe with this hot mic leak, it's two things. That the story was shut down by ABC News. We heard this before from NPR, but now we can hear it in their own words. To me, that was an honest moment where they thought they were in private and they were safe. And while I do uh, sort of lament the, the breach of privacy to an extent, we need to hear this. We need to hear the reality, but we learned something else from this. These, their own high profile anchors don't understand why their stories are being shut down. These news companies are not in the interest of telling you the truth and speaking truth to power. Their interest is protecting their bottom line and even their own personalities are shocked by this. You know, I will, I will say this, the Epstein story, it really does bring left and right together. They disagree on why it's happening. The left is blaming Barr and the right's blaming Clinton. I don't care. Everyone agrees something fishy is afoot. And that's all that we need. Because I think at the end of the day, you could take Jenk Uger of the Young Turks and Steven Crowder, and they would both probably say, we agree to investigate this. Okay. I, I could be wrong. I don't know what Jenk's position is, but I'd be willing to bet you can find the most ardent Bernie Sanders supporter and Trump supporter, Hillary supporter, whatever. And they would say, investigate it. Ignore your theories. Ignore who you think's responsible. Investigate it. Something, something's wrong, right? That's what we need to know. Why are these journalists shutting the story down? Check this out. James O'Keefe has set up Expose ABC News, signed the petition. I believe this is from them. I could be wrong, but they say we must demand answers. Maybe this isn't from James O'Keefe. I don't want to ascribe this to him if it's not from him. So if it is, but, but they're demanding answers and there's a website for this. It's on the Project Veritas uh, website. I think James tweeted about it, but now let's get into the, uh, into the NPR story. I have to be really careful. So I've, I've, I've set this up in a specific way because I know that if I show you one wrong word, YouTube will shut this video down in two seconds. Let me just stress. I have a couple videos I made about Hillary Clinton recently where there was news about her having to do with Tulsi Gabbard and a potential run. For some reason, those videos got, got uh, demonetized. And, that's, and, and I have hard manual reviews. I have people like, so they, they review all of my videos now. Like they're watching me like a hawk. And I can't figure out why these videos were, were taken. All I was doing was talking about mainstream polling and news, mainstream commentary. These stories are on NPR, CNN, Fox News. But these, these two stories on Clinton, very strange. I can talk about a bunch of other things, no problem. But those stories. So I, I, I can't tell you why it is. I can't, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I just know that I got to make sure when talking about sensitive issues, I do everything in my power to make sure that I have, I have stepped on no eggshells, you know, I've, I've broken no rules. That being said, I will stress this again. Normally I do the Timcast donate call out. Share this video if you think this story is important, because I firmly believe from, you know, uh, look, man, when I, when the story first broke from Project Veritas, this is what I got. Their website, 504 Air, probably because it's, it's called the hug of death. The story was so viral, but I don't know. I also know that my initial tweet, Twitter didn't load the metadata. It didn't do an auto preview. I don't know why that is. Uh, I know that one video I did recently where I showed Project Veritas's website was hard deranked. Viewership crashed. And I had to change the title to YouTube as suppressing this. I don't know why they're suppressing it. I don't know why. No conspiracies here. It just happened. You can speculate as to why it happened. But that's why I'm saying, look, it's possible that we're covering dangerous stories. Veritas, me, uh, We Are Change, Luke Rukowski, and... It could mean the end of our channels, our careers. But when we all stand up and talk about this, well, they can't do anything about it. So share this, share Veritas. Let's read. Vanity Fair. In a statement, Carter says Vanity Fair takes its legal obligations seriously, especially when the subject is a private person rigorously protected under libel laws. Carter previously told The Hollywood Reporter that Ward did not have three sources on record, which he said he considered uh, necessary for the story. This week, Carter amended that. 
He says Ward did not have three sources that met the magazine's legal threshold. For the first time in comments to NPR, Maria and Annie Farmer are publicly confirming they gave interviews to Ward. They said they, uh, they both spoke about their abuse on record by name. In 2002, their mother, Janice Farmer, tells NPR she did too. And she says they were crestfallen. Vanity Fair didn't report the allegations. Vanity Fair, uh, to give you the context, because I can't show you the rest of this story. These are victims on the record. The story went nowhere. You know what's really crazy? There's one story uh, circ circulating where apparently one of these journalists opened their apartment door to see a bullet on the ground in front of their door. And all of a sudden the story vanished. But there's more. The next up we have NPR's reporting on ABC News. They say, in 2015, the ABC News team of Amy Robach and Jill, uh, Jim Hill secured an interview with uh, a grief. I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that name. Grief, grief. In a sequence of events confirmed by the network, produce, uh, paid f uh, in a sequence of events confirmed by the network, producers paid for Gaffrey, <laughs> Gaffrey and her family to fly from Colorado, where they live, to New York City and put them up at the Ritz Carlton Hotel on Central Park South. Roback and her news crews interviewed her on tape for more than an hour about Epstein. I, I really wanted a spotlight shown on him and the others who acted with him and enabled his vile and shameless conduct against young girls and young women. I viewed the ABC News, the ABC interview as a potential game changer. The story never aired. And she said she never was told why. ABC News would not detail its editorial sources. One ABC News staffer with knowledge of the events of the network received a call from one of Epstein's top lawyers, Harvard Law Professor Emeritus Alan Dershowitz. And Guffrey and her lawyers placed great significance on that call. We also learned, like I mentioned early on, in the leaked audio, we can hear Roback say that once the palace found out, all of a sudden, they were worried they weren't going to get interviews with Will and Kate. Prince Andrew is implicated in this. Did the, the royal family, the British royal family, pressure ABC News? Alan Dershowitz, according to the story, pressured ABC News. And now we get to the more serious. You see, apparently, NPR found tax records that reflect a 30,000 donation in 2017 to a Montessori preschool called O'Gorman Garden in Harlem from a foundation based in the U.S. Virgin Islands that had previously been controlled by Epstein. The story is that one of the reporters for the Times, uh, this is uh, Tom, uh, I got to be really careful because if I scroll too far up, there's a lot of things in these stories and I'm sorry it has to be this way, but I'm, I'm doing my best to make sure the con this, this context can get out. So I'm, 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 I apologize for this, but this is the game we're playing. So Thomas flagged a problem. He told his editors Epstein had been, had been a great source for years and become something of a friend. How close? Thomas had solicited a $30,000 contribution from Epstein for a Harlem cultural center. Thomas suggested Epstein was just a source of information, not someone he would report on or investigate. His editors were aghast. They rejected the distinction he was trying to make. And his editors benched him instantly from any professional contact with Epstein. Soliciting a donation to a personal charity is a clear violation of the policy that governs Time journalists' relationship with their sources, said Times Co-Chief uh, uh, Times Co-Chief spokesperson Eileen Murphy. As soon as editors became aware of it, they took action. They go on to say that a 2008 profile, Thomas had traveled to Epstein's private isle in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the peace ran just before Epstein submitted to authorities in Florida's incarceration. However, they view the story, according to NPR, as kind of deflecting the more serious allegations. Surprise, surprise. He solicited money from Epstein. The New York Times, aghast, pulls him from the story. Now listen, what we're seeing here is actually some good news. There are editors and there are journalists at these companies who are angry. They were shocked this guy took money. They were angered by it. Even the higher ups. Amy Robeck, that's her name, right? From ABC News, shocked her story didn't make it. But I take you now back to a story from page6.com. I'm not familiar with what page six is, but this is a story from 2010 that's been circulating now. Prince Andrew talks of royal joy over Prince William, William's wedding. They say, Prince Andrew regaled a bevy of media heavyweights at billionaire Jeffrey Epstein's Upper East Side townhouse the other night when he was told of the royal family's joy over Prince William's upcoming wedding to Kate Middleton. Andrew was quizzed by his guests, Katie Couric, George Stephanopoulos, Charlie Rose, Woody Allen, 
and Chelsea Handler at a dinner thrown by Epstein. The swamp runs deep. I don't know who or why, um, necessarily. I don't want to get into any conspiracies, but NPR's reporting makes it sound like at least one of these journalists, at least some of them, are in on the take. Now, I can't speak to the corporate overlords at ABC News and Vanity Fair or otherwise, but it's certainly not Amy Robach. She was shocked and angered. But I will make one point. If you have this story, why wouldn't you publish? That's crazy to me. We, you know, I can, I can respect the frustration from Amy over having all of this, saying we had Clinton, we had everything. But the royal family, and you stayed at ABC, and you didn't raise a stink, and you didn't leak, and you didn't get this information out. It's, it's frustrating to me because it shows us how, how, far, uh, how far gone journalism really is. Look at these personalities, these news anchors, going to a dinner with Epstein, and then the story doesn't make it. Stephanopoulos works for ABC News, right? I think so. If you get a story of this magnitude, and for some reason you can't do the story, give the story to somebody else. But you know what? I guess the issue is, as James pointed out earlier, these other outlets, they won't publish it either. Vanity Fair, New York Times, ABC News, none of them ran it. So I don't know what to tell you, man, but I will say this. You can criticize Veritas. You can be upset with them over certain coverage, but they're certainly one of the last organizations doing real investigative work. I was talking to a journalist friend of mine recently. I said, what happened to those big stories that where journalists were putting their life on the line to expose major malfeasance in the government and in the corporations? Why is it that journalism today is orange man bad? Why is it that what do we, we turn on CNN and what do we get? Trump's typos, his misspelling errors. I kid you, that's what they said, misspelling errors. What do you mean? Does that mean he's spelling correctly? No, his spelling errors. That's what we get. Trump got two scoops of ice cream. I know that story was a bit in jest. But when we want to talk about real corruption, Veritas may not be perfect, okay? They may have their point of view, their perspective. You may think they're biased, but they're doing the work. And you know what, man? For everything you might criticize them over, they actually just published this. ABC News did not. ABC News, Amy Robert could have come out and said, I am angry my story was shut down. She didn't. But to her friends, she did. She didn't tell you the truth. Now I can respect to a certain degree. There are a lot of things I can't talk about either because we got to make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and to make sure we can survive and live to see another day. But this is a man who was accused of all sorts of awful things and he was free. And she had the power to say, this is what this guy has done. We have photographic evidence. What do we have today? Brett Kavanaugh. Okay. You want to claim you didn't have the, the rigorous legal standards? I don't buy it. Because they ran Kavanaugh over the coals. Over what? Some fake nonsense that was recanted later? Not, not Bozzy Ford, but the other people who apologized that they made it up. That was breaking news. No evidence. No evidence needed. What about the whistleblower and Donald Trump? Everybody's covering that story. And what do we have? Nothing. Secondhand hearsay information. That's enough for you. And this is what I can't stand about news media. They act like they've got a smoking gun on Trump. No, you don't. We got a smoking gun on Kavanaugh. No, you don't. In this case, you had photographs, corroborating witness statement, a previous track record, all of these outlets. They refused to do it. So you know what? If the best we have right now is Veritas, well, then that's what you have. They're the best we have. They're at least publishing this, exposing the media who refuses to tell us what's really going on. All of these journalists telling everyone to calm down about the Epstein story. Yeah, they won't cover it. Who will? So I'll tell you what, man. You know, for the most part, I'm doing commentary. I know. I hope this context was, was, was relevant. This is NPR reporting this, okay? That these, these news organizations shut the story down. Why? I don't know. But I tell you what, I'm not familiar with page six. They're considered credible by NewsGuard. And they're telling us right now, these, these, these high profile news personalities are hanging out with Epstein. You take it from there. You tell me what you think. I don't know what to tell you. Because I can, I can tell you what I think. And they will, they, will, they will try and shut me down in two seconds. I'm willing to bet this video is going to get deranked, demonetized, all that bad stuff. So it is what it is. But if I, I, I will not stop talking about what needs to be talked about. So James O'Keefe and Veritas, they're doing incredible work. You can criticize them all day and I don't care. They published this footage. They have set a major news cycle trend right now. This news needed to get out. We needed to hear 
from these people who refuse to speak up and tell us what's going on. You know what I hate almost more than anything? I don't want to say more than anything because it's strong, but everything is fake. Every PR statement, every politician, Trump included, when they come out and they say something, you know they're, t- they're not telling you the truth. You know there's other things happening behind the scenes, and I can respect to a degree that some of this needs to be kept a secret for a reason, that you can't just blurt out a story you think you know. You've got to get the facts. You've got to protect yourself. You've got to do it right. But what I'm really, really upset about is when, when, a, when a disaster strikes, when a news story breaks, ABC News says, it wasn't up to our standards. You're lying. We know how you covered Kavanaugh. We know how you covered Trump. You're lying. I don't trust you. I believe, in my opinion, you're liars. I don't want to get sued. The New York Times, a staff member actually soliciting funds from this guy. There you go. I don't know if journalism will ever come back, but it's been gone for a long time because it's easier and cheaper and faster to call the orange man bad than to actually speak truth to power. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out the Veritas video. It's at their website, projectveritas.com. I'll have several more videos coming up for you on other issues at 6 p.m. youtube.com slash timcastnews, and I will see you there.